and sometimes I'll just tap into the other options. I wasn't addicted to them necessarily, but you know what? I was addicted. I was completely owned by myself. I was completely owned by wanting to be control, wanting to control my own life, and wanting to satisfy the desires. And when I was your guys' age, I can completely and totally relate to that. I can t relate to this too. In this passage, the prophets of Baal, 450, are dancing around this altar all afternoon, and Elijah's taunting them because he knows God is bad. He's like, he's like, maybe your God's sleeping, maybe he's on the toilet, maybe he's on vacation, maybe you got to wake him up. And Elijah's just taunting these prophets, and they're dancing and dancing, and finally comes to the point that these prophets are slashing themselves, and they're cutting, and they're stabbing, and it says, the Bible says, the blood's flowing from them. And, and tonight, maybe, maybe literally you're serving, you, you're enslaved by these things, and you're doing things you never, absolutely never thought you would do to satisfy them. Maybe, maybe figure to you, maybe literally some of you are cutting yourselves, you know, just to feel some pain. Maybe you're giving in to desires you never thought you would give in to. Maybe you're going places with a boyfriend or a girlfriend, going to parties, doing things that you never thought you would do. You're cheating off tests. You're doing something completely out of character. And in this way, you're cutting yourself just to get the attention, just to hold the attention of these owners. You're cutting and you're slashing and, you're, and you just want to satisfy them. And I really, I really think that sometimes what's happening here at Timberlake, sometimes that's what's happening here in our youth ministry. And, and the fact, the harsh reality is these things will let you down. The owners, even though you're doing all these things for them, the owners and these slaves, these balls, the things we put confidence in above God are going to let you down and it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt so bad when nothing happens. So let's kind of look at finally, um, finally what happens last year. Elijah, after all this goes on, Elijah says here, he confronts the people, this wild, crazy man. He says, you need to choose. You need to choose today the God you're going to serve. And we'll decide by a trial by fire. And the, and the people watch as the bales they've been serving for seven years don't show up. No one answers. No one pays attention. And so Elijah says, all right, that's not the message translation. Elijah literally says, that's enough of that. It's my turn. That's enough of that. And so Elijah comes up, and it says he rebuilds the altar of the Lord, lays on it wood, lays on it the bowl of sacrifice, digs a trench around it. And this, part, this next point is really interesting. Um, <coughs> Elijah then takes four uh, ceremonial jars, those are about 10 to 20 gallons of water each, and dumps them over the altar. And a couple things to note here real quick is Israel, one, is in, definitely in a season of complete drought. Uh, there's no water, which means there's no food for the people. They're in famine. They're, they're starving. And these people watch as Elijah uh, pours out water. You know what I mean? Gallons and gallons of water. He pours it out. Uh, four jars over, over the altar. And a couple of reasons for this. The first one is uh, at the time in the Middle East, there was just like, um, there was this, this was common practice to do um, trial by fire to see which is God. And so some magicians would literally dug, dig a tunnel from one side of the hill to another where they could breathe fire um, through the hill, and it would ignite the sacrifice. So Elijah is uh, is pouring water just to say, yeah, that's not what's happening here. You know what I mean? That, that's not what's going to happen. But the, the other implication, and I didn't catch this till uh, kind of recently when I was reading through it, is Elijah does this three times. So do the math with me. Four jars times three. Elijah dumps 12 jars of water over this thing. And in the Bible, 12 is a number of that signifies completeness. There's 12 tribes of Israel. There's 12 uh, disciples of Christ. It's a complete number. It signifies wholeness. I think what's really happening here is in, in pouring out 12 jars over this thing, four, four times he pours three jars out, Elijah is saying completely and totally, God, if, if this sacrifice is going to light up, it's going to be because you did it. It's going to be because you lit this thing on fire, because I've poured out water over it. I've poured out in a complete way. I've sacrificed myself. I've made it impossible for me to succeed in this sense. I've made it impossible for my option to be the best option. It's got to be your option, God. I think we all know what happens. You guys have all heard the story. Uh, that the fire, God prays, O oh Lord God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, show these people that you're God and turn their hearts back again. And then it says the fire of the Lord fell and consumed, just just comes down and consumes not only the sacrifice, but the wood and the stones. I love this part. It consumes the water which Elijah pours out. It consumes the part of Elijah that he has poured out as part of himself over this fire. So tonight, that's my challenge to you. As you guys can reflect real quick, are you willing to sacrifice that? Are you willing to, to pro-choice, choose one option or choose another? Option A or option B, but which one are you going to choose tonight? Are you, are you willing to pour out yourself upon the altar of God and let him consume you? All right.